Okay. <laughs> Take two. So, um, I'd like to welcome everyone back. Um, what I did was, on my last attempt, I upgraded Windows Chrome, and I thought that would make the difference, but apparently there were a few people who said it froze up on them. So, I don't know, I also had a couple reports that um, some people said everything was working fine, so I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I hope it does. My name is Greg Prescott from N5D. Namaste, everyone. And uh, today I'm going to be doing a QA. and uh, I've got several pages of questions that I missed from the first two Facebook Lives. What happens is it goes by so quick that it's hard to keep track with um, everything and everyone. And I see so many people already here that um, I, I'm, uh, there's Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Randall Lee Saunders. Hey, brother. Julia, Nicole, Susan, Andrea, Iris, hello everyone, namaste, so grateful everybody could make it right now. So the first question that I have on the list is from Desiree Lewis and she's asking if I actually project. Now, <laughs> we kind of covered this once already, didn't we? Um, especially with uh, my friend Stacy LeClaire in the last one, but what I'll say about that is um, kind of. Um, I got to the point where I kind of did and it all goes back to when I was young about 12 years old or so and I tried to learn how to astral project but I never got it back then maybe I don't know 10 15 years ago I tried doing it and I got to the point where I would lift out of my body and I came maybe four or five inches off my body and my cell phone rang which is a cardinal sin you always want to turn off any kind of distractions so that was telling me I'm not supposed to be doing that and uh, and I related that to uh, other things that you're probably not supposed to be doing that you're guided to do. Um, and for me, uh, it just shows me that these are some of the abilities that we do have and that we're able to tap into. Another ability that I have um, was, and I'll explain this one, I'm able to, to uh, see entities. And the example I gave was when Michelle and I were on a cruise and she got to the room before me about an hour beforehand and when I got in there, I saw her lifting up out of her body, and there was a man, a short man, about five foot two or so, wearing a fedora, standing on the side of the bed watching her. So I was able to see her lift out and astral travel while um, this, this man, who was probably one of her guides, was watching her. So I wasn't able to communicate with this guy but I've seen him myself also. Um, there's times where I'll open up the refrigerator and out of the, out of the corner of my eye, I'll see him standing there. So he's watching me too. <laughs> same guy, same, he's got the same fedora on and, but you know, he always disappears quickly. And I, like I said, I'm not able to communicate with him yet. But I think that everybody has these abilities and uh, we're basically shown that we can do so much more than what we think we can do. Myself, I'm not supposed to be astral projecting or being the one that's the communicator with spirits on the other side because basically the universe gave me a large enough task to keep focused on, but they also wanted me to know that, okay, you have all these abilities too, but stay focused on what you're doing. Which reminds me of a message I just got from a healer and I'm, I told her I wouldn't me mention her name, but she contacted me yesterday and asked if it was okay if her and uh, her group did healing on me. Now, normally I don't partake in stuff like that, but um, this person and I go back before time. There's a handful of us that are here, for, have been here for eons. Um, she and I go back before time. And, uh, and of course I gave her permission to. And she said that she did lots of work on me. Um, I, were, I was blocked, I was blocked. Things should start flowing for you with much grace and ease. Your integration of the new energies will take place over the next six days. Ease up on the work stuff. You need to drink two six ounce glasses of water with squeezed lemon 
and a pinch of Himalayan salt twice a day. Many blessings. Try to sleep as much as possible and get sun kisses. So that was a cool message. Um, and that reminds me about this latest wave that I mentioned a couple days ago on my Facebook page. Um, I mentioned that on that particular day, I actually took two naps at, for a total of over five hours. I was completely drained. So this huge wave came through and I was just curious if anyone else was feeling that. So I put this quick energy update on my Greg Prescott Facebook page and I shared it and gosh, hundreds of freaking responses of people that felt the same exact thing just totally wiped out and many people also ended up taking two naps. Um, so, and I'm still feeling it. I took a nap earlier today and I I'd got a decent night of sleep last night. So it's a very draining energy, but you know, as many of you do, uh, that when we sleep, we're working in the astral levels in so many different ways as multidimensional beings. So it's an opportunity to do a lot of cleansing, a lot of work, and possibly, you know, DNA upgrades, who knows what's going on on so many, so many different levels. So uh, let's move on to our next question. Also, if you guys have any questions, I'm going to try to keep paying attention to the questions on the right, but I've got some questions I need to go through first. So hold off on the questions for now, but keep them in mind. And when you're ready to ask the question, start out with a question mark, go into the question and end in a question mark and I'll be able to see it. And I'll let you, I'll give you a heads up when it's, I'm just about done with these questions and we can answer some more questions then. Okay. And I'm seeing that. Yeah. People are commenting. I felt exhausted, said Peggy O'Neill. Uh, Andrea, I was tired and tested today, and she meant rested. Uh, yeah, Susan, Julie, yeah, a lot of people are, are feeling those energies coming in. And uh, they are very draining, but rest assured that this is something positive that's happening, okay? So the next question is from Yvonne Ava, and, and she's asking, who is Shiva? Shiva is one of the three Vedic gods. Um, and she was known <laughs> as the destroyer, kind of like Pluto and Capricorn. Uh, the other, uh, the other gods are, well, Brahma. I'm sorry, Brahma is the first god, and that's the creator. And then you have Vishnu, who is is the preserver. And then you have Shiva, who's the destroyer. So it's a it's a process that comes in, you know, create, live, destroy, you know. And Shiva's coming in again. And that's what I've been talking about with Pluto and Capricorn. Pluto is known as the destroyer and Pluto will tear down everything that's not in humanity's best interests and will give us an opportunity to rebuild them in our best interests. <coughs> now, <coughs> excuse me, Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008 and stays there until the year 2023. So. Shiva's either on her way or she's already here, she slash he. Um, so what we're going to see, and we're already seeing it, is a collapse of the banking, money, and political systems. Money, banking, and government is basically, basically all going to collapse. The last time that Pluto was in Capricorn was during both the French and American revolutions in the 1700s. And if you look around, you see that revolutions are going on all around the world. So this is a cyclic process. You know, this is what we learn from astrology that cycles repeat themselves. And now Shiva's back and she's not only back for the end of this Pluto and Capricorn, she's also back for the end of this 26,000 year cycle. Okay? So. Hi, Anastasia. She's one of our writers on in 5D. And she gives us all these amazing energy updates every, just about every day, sometimes more than once a day. Our next question is kind of just a comment. It's from Carolyn Kaki Ard, and she wants me to talk about UFOs. Um, the first UFO sighting I had, I'm, I think it was about, I was 18 years old. And this was in upstate New York at a place called um, 
Table Rocks. We actually called it On Top of the World. It's this plateau up by Hartwood College that overlooks Franklin Mountain. And we were having a keg party. And there was, at the time, maybe seven or eight of us there. We had the keg, but we didn't have the tap, so we weren't drinking yet. We are just standing around bullshitting with each other. And up over Franklin Mountain comes these three UFOs in formation, two in the back, one in the front. And they fly over the mountain, they hover there, and then phew, take right off. And we're all like, with our jaws dropped, oh my God, did you see that? It was so cool. So that was my first official UFO sighting. Now, since then, I've bought, these are gen generation three night vision goggles. And uh, you can't go 10 minutes without seeing a UFO. Um, sometimes you see multiple UFOs. Um, I actually saw this huge mothership coming off the Gulf of Mexico. It was a cigar shaped mothership, the biggest one I've ever seen. Funny thing is, when I locked in on him with the night vision goggles, he disappeared. Maybe I wasn't supposed to see him, but I did. I've also had um, this third eye vision. And if I can remember, I want to talk a little about Siesta Key, something that many people don't know about Siesta Key. But I had this third eye vision about this mothership flying up over Siesta Key and heading southwest and it went right over the green lifeguard house, which is kind of why I think I'm attracted to being there when I do go to the, uh, to the main beach. Getting back to Siesta Key, what a lot of people don't know is that it's one of 22 light cities in the world. And if you do the numerology of Sarasota, it breaks down to the number 11. Oh, I'm sorry, if you do the numerology of, the, uh, of Florida, it breaks down to 11. Sarasota breaks down to 22, and Siesta Key breaks down to 33. So you have 11, 22, and 33. It's very unique, and as many people know, we have a beach that's completely unique to any other beach on the planet uh, that has 99.9% .9 quartz crystal sand. Um, according to TripAdvisor, Siesta Key is the number one beach in the United States and number five in the world. And it, and a lot of people will tell you that are energy sensitives that when you step on that sand, you feel that energy. And I knew as soon as I put foot on that sand that I had to live here. And within a week, I found a place to live and I've been here ever since. Even when I go on a vacation, if I'm gone for longer than four days, by the fifth day, I'm thinking, man, I need to be back in Siesta Key. So. Anyway, that's uh, going off the topic a little about UFOs, but yeah, I've seen quite a few. Um, I highly recommend uh, night vision goggles if you can afford them. They're not, they're not cheap. They, this pair cost me, I think it was $2,500, but it's, it has one of the best lenses that you can have available. It has, has what's called an alpha lens, which means there's no imperfections in it, or if any, it's not, notice, uh, it's not noticeable at all. So. Okay, so Lisa Smith is asking, in which way are you creative, music, art, or something else? Uh, well, one of my major sequences in high school was art, and I do like art, but I haven't done that in a while. Even though I did buy some uh, oils and pastels and uh, an easel and stuff like that, I just don't have the time for it. Music, definitely. I've been playing guitar since I was, gosh, eight years old. My grandfather, uh, my, on my mother's side, he's Spanish, and he would come up from Brooklyn, New York, and he'd bring his acoustic guitar with him. He'd also bring a bunch of bananas and cowboy boots for me, and, but yet he said he didn't have any favorites because he didn't bring anything for my sisters. I was the son that he never had. Anyway, he, he would bring his, Spanish, his, uh, his acoustic guitar up, and he'd pull it out and he'd play that Spanish style guitar and it was just so beautiful. He was like the Pied Piper to me. So he'd get that guitar and I'd sit there and watch him for hours, just glued to him. And I was so mesmerized by his style of playing. When I was 12, he bought me my first electric guitar and amp. 
and uh, that was really cool. But he passed shortly afterwards, so I never really had a chance to jam with him. So later on in life, I was probably in my 30s, I wrote a flamenco style song on guitar in memory of my grandfather. And I played it for my mother, and it sounded so much like her father that it made her cry. It brought tears to her eyes. And every time she comes over, she's like, grab your guitar, play that song. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I will. But I think I basically channeled my grandfather because I've never played a flamenco style guitar, but it was so easy to put together that composition. So probably channeled it from him. And there's many times that I am playing that I'll feel his presence with me. So that's pretty cool. Sue Darowitz, are you considered black magic? No. <laughs> I'm not considered black magic, but what I do is sometimes I'll use black magic principles for the light. The way I see it is if they can use it against us, we can use it against them. And here's a great example. Um, a lot of you know that I'm working on my DNA um, as we only have 20 some odd codons in our DNA activated out of 64. So if someone can figure out a way to activate the remaining codons, they can do anything. And that's one of the things I'm working on. So what I did is um, one of the black magic things they do is reversals. Okay, so what I did was reversals in a positive way. So all of my codons are open, reversed, is Nipo Eris Nodak Yimphala. So, I mean, I'm not hurting anyone by doing that and actually a lot of people know this but those who don't know the first two things I'm going to do once all the codons in my DNA are turned on is put my hands on the planet and heal the air water and food supply of Mother Earth and then I'm going to hook my higher self up with every other higher self on the planet and if they want to be healed of anything they'll be healed instantly so those are the two things I want to do. It's always in humanity's greatest and highest good. Another thing I do with the DNA activation project, I'm using myself as a guinea pig, um, I use what are called sigils. And a sigil is where you take the sentence of intention, you remove all the vowels and it gets organized into a certain pattern that you can't even tell that it was a sentence to begin with. It's just this little work of art. And uh, that's on my glass and it says all of my codons are open. So um, I use a couple things that they do use in black magic for the good. So no, I am not a black ma magician. If anything, you know, I do have several books, uh, Wicca, Wicca books that have white magic in them. Um, and I dabble a little in that, but I'm not a Wiccan, I'm not a white magician either. I just do whatever I feel guided to do in humanity's best interest. And I know you guys can feel that, okay? Uh, Lisa Smith asks, do you believe in reincarnation? Oh yeah, uh, many of us have been here and done this so many times. As a matter of fact, I've been mentioning this quite a bit. We're re-remembering that we've done this all before. And uh, yeah, definitely, I, re I believe in reincarnation. And as a matter of fact, there's an article on N5D that has a free, an MP3 on there. It's free. And what you do is you listen to it before you go to sleep at night. And as you're drifting off, it triggers your past life, one of, one of your past lives. And I've only done this once. And it was a fascinating past life where I was a Mayan elder during the Spanish Inquisition and the Spaniards were going through town celebrating and they threatened to kill me if I didn't convert to Christianity and I lied to them and I said I would but I lied because I wanted to pass on my knowledge to the children and the grandchildren um, and it's so ironic too because I am one quarter Spanish but in a past life I was Mayan so it was my genetic lineage, the Spanish, 
coming to get my or going after my DNA lineage, the Mayans. Talk about conflicting um, dreams of different cultures clashing. Boy. Anyway, that probably explains a lot of my disdain for organized religion um, because they were forcing to, me into Christianity and uh, or threatening to kill me. So much for love thy neighbor, huh? This water's awesome. It's um, Alkalife. It's a uh, 10 pH uh, alkaline water. It's the best tasting water ever, hands down. I've had other 10 and 9 point whatevers and so on and so forth, but this water is the best. No, I'm not getting paid. No, this is not a commercial. <laughs> it's just wonderful water. If you have it in your area, definitely get it. It's delicious. Okay. Craig Jones asks, do you sage when cleansing a house? Yes, I do. Um, and I, I use actual sage. I mean, uh, when you sage a house, it's some, some people don't use necessarily sage. It's just the smoke and the removal of the spirit. And you can use different things. But yeah, I use, um, I use sage. And what I do is I say, um, I ask that all negative entities leave this house immediately. Only those of the highest vibration of truth, love, and light are welcome here because you want to welcome those friendly beings that want to visit you I mean a lot of people don't want to think about it but you have so many guides and angels around you at all times you also have friends and family and they're all they're always there they're always with you and I'm sure that they will give you your privacy if you really need it and you might not want to think about them during private moments but chances are they're probably still there cheering you on but you want to welcome those, at least I do. You know, when I see orbs in my house, you know, a blue orb by the bathroom or an orange orb over there, I know that it's friendly and benevolent. So that's what I do. I, I, I do cleanse and I, I make sure that only those of the highest vibration of truth, love, and light are welcome. Andrea Bernstone says that she has more night terrors than dreams. Why is this? I think that's something, it could be for several reasons, but I, my heart and my gut are both telling me that there's something within you that needs to be purged. Um, that, that there's something in your, it could be something in your past life it could be something in your current life. Some, there's some kind of fear going on and you need to release that. And the best way to do that is to forgive yourself. But ultimately, if you can figure out what the night terror is about and who's constantly involved with it, you probably will need to forgive that person as well. Even if you don't recognize that person, you can put it out there to the universe. Whoever is responsible for this, uh, for bringing these night terrors on, I release you, I forgive you, and release you in the name of love. Okay. Now, it could also be, I don't know if you, um, perhaps, if you partake in alcohol, and not, and many people do in this, in this genre, yeah, we'll have a co cocktail now and then. I know I do, I rarely do, but occasionally I do. As long as your vibration is high, and you, you're grounded, you're pretty safe, pretty safe. But if you're drinking a lot, um, and you're not working on yourself, then you are open to having some kind of you know, psychic attacks or implants. You know, um, when you walk into a bar and leave a bar, that's where they are. Many of them hang out over that doorway and they're waiting for that opportunity for you to come out and just latch onto you, jump on your shoulder. Do you ever see those people walking around, they're all hunched over? I mean, it's as if they're carrying like three archons on their back, you know? <laughs> <laughs> which they probably are. So I'm, I'm not saying that you necessarily do drink or don't drink, but um, watch what you're putting into your body because that might be triggering something as well, okay? Uh, Christine Bradley asks, can you ask and ask for, uh, this is worded incorrectly, 
Can you ask to manifest a lot of money even if you haven't got a specific purpose? I guess so, but I don't think the universe would really come through on it. You can ask. It's not going to hurt, but I think the universe would pretty much want to know why do you need all this money? Because money's really, you know, who cares about that? It's crap. I mean, of course we need it, but if you're using it for materialistic bullshit, then I don't think the universe would come through on you for that, honestly. But maybe if you swore I'd give it all away and, you know, help the world, you know, do it and then do it. <laughs> give it all away and help the world. Try it and see what happens. But make sure your heart's in the right place, okay? John Blampide is asking, can you describe what the divine feminine means to, means to you in a couple sentences? Well, I mentioned, I believe in the last Facebook Live, how my daughter, Brittany, um, showed me that divine feminine in me. And to me, it's the acknowledgement and the willingness to accept what we already have within us everyone has the divine feminine and the divine masculine in them except as males we suppress that and you know, we're taught as kids you know be a man take it like a man you know big boys don't cry crap like that so we end up suppressing our emotions which is really unhealthy and it's rediscovering that feminine side that we all have and a lot of guys are afraid to acknowledge that because they don't want to seem like less less like a man but I'll, I'll say it again, you know, once you accept the divine feminine and are able to express your emotions, your woman's going to love you even that much more uh, to be able to show that soft side. There's times where Michelle and I will be watching a movie. I'm the one that's crying. <laughs> she's, I mean, she's getting emotional, but I'm the one wiping the tears out of my eyes, you know, so, uh, yeah, so... I guess that kind of explains it, you know, just being open to that, you know, the feminine side of yourself. You know, we all have testosterone. We all have, well, what is the one for the woman, uh, androgen? I don't, I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, gosh, if somebody can help me out with that word, you all know what I'm talking about. Um, it's the opposite of testosterone for women, but we all have them both within us. And, uh, you know, just honor the masculine and the feminine within each of you. Okay. So, Eugenia Ortiz is asking, what kind of things do you say or do to be in 5D? Prayers, mantras, techniques? Oh, gosh, you know, when I had that vision, of actually being there and feeling what it's like of all that unconditional love I mean that just came to me um, I think but you, the more you place your thoughts and intentions out there you're already manifesting it and you have to keep in mind too that we've already done this before you've already been there so you try to envision yourself there and bring it to you okay and this is all what we're doing is re-remembering that we've already done this before. So it's already been created. created. We've already made it through. We've already graduated and moved beyond. We're just waking up from the dream right now. Naimi, N-A-M-I-E, Shoguro, Shoguro. I hear Planet X is real. Should I not worry? <laughs> what if I said I heard it's not real? <laughs> um, you know, you see a lot of videos out there, and it can be fascinating, just like the flat earth theory. It can be fascinating, but I, I don't think so. Um, I don't think there's anything to worry about. We would know, there would be more definitive proof than, you know, some lens flares and some CGI graphics and stuff like that. Not to say that there aren't other bodies that they're picking up or whatever. Who knows? They could be motherships for all I know that they're picking up but is it something to worry about no and what are you gonna do if it, if it is for real <laughs> say planet X is coming what are you gonna do fly and stop it yeah you know it's just gonna happen and you know there's nothing to fear death is certainly nothing to fear after facing death um, with a stage 3 cancer <laughs> there's nothing to fear so 
I wouldn't, I wouldn't put my time and energy into something that may or may not happen. It's a waste of time and effort, in my opinion. Just like the flat earth theory. To me, it's a distraction. It might be flat, might be round, might be an egg shaped. Who knows? It doesn't matter to me. Until a flat earther can film another flat earther walking off the edge and falling, I don't believe it. Okay? And they'll never prove it. And until they're able to prove it, it's not worth me investing my time into it. So, just like Planet X, until I can actually see it, I'm not even going to think about it. It's not my reality. Uh, Michelle Lynn Gill is asking, do you work with crystals for grounding, such as hematite? Uh, not really. No, I don't. But um, that reminds me, I do have a crystal I want to share with you today, uh, with everyone. But if you do work with crystals, I highly recommend that you uh, check out the work of Adrian Goff. We had her at an N5D conference in Texas uh, last month, and she does amazing work. She can answer anything and everything about crystals. You know, just off the top of my head, if you are going to work with lower chakra crystals, try to get grounding ones like obsidian, a black one. Uh, you might want to grab any kind of like maybe brown uh, crystals. Um, the grounding colored crystals or the crystals that align with your bottom three chakras, red, orange, and yellow. So if you can find any one of those crystals to associate with which, whichever particular chakra you're working with, go for it. Okay, let's see. Stephen Goodine asks, what do you think about the simulation theory? Elon Musk says we are living in one. Honestly, I don't know what the simulation theory is. I, I, <laughs> a lot of things I don't know, and that's one of them. <laughs> I wish I could answer you. I've got one more question, so if anyone does have any questions, um, hold them off for just one minute because I, I want to talk about a rock after this, but get them ready, okay? Um, Aisha Groenveld is asking, how do you keep your vibration high if you are physically experiencing ascension symptoms? That can be tough because I know that when I put out that recent energy update, a lot of people were experiencing migraines along with the fatigue and physical drainage of their energy. And it can be, it can be difficult, but to keep your vibration high, I keep going back to the same thing and you see this so much with people who profess to be spiritual but they're not doing it grounding ground yourself um, ultimately you know sit under a tree until you feel grounded <laughs> and keep doing that go out to the beach until you feel grounded and keep doing that um, it will go away but once you keep your once you're grounded and have a high vibration that stuff's not going to last with you very long. Now, I want to talk a little about, this is our uh, stone of the day. This stone is really cool. It's called a spirit quartz. And it's got, I don't know if you can kind of tell on Facebook Live, but it's, it's like a light lavender, a purplish kind of color. And it sparkles like snowflakes. And it's so cool. And I probably overpaid for it. I paid like 130 bucks for this little thing, but certain rocks just call you and this is one of them now this is what it says about spirit quartz spirit quartz comes from south africa it can be clear quartz amethyst citrine or a combination of these possessing the qualities of the stones and its makeup it usually has a single point covered by hundreds of tiny sparkling colored points and anyone knows that knows me knows i like anything that's shiny and sparkly so that's one of the main reasons why i got it uh, spirit quartz can be used to activate and cleanse other minerals. A special quality of its ability is a special quality is its ability to provide insights to family or community problems. It can help enhance working with groups of people by easing communication, resolving differences, and finding resolutions. And it's just freaking cool. So that's our our stone of the day, spirit quartz. Shock T Sirius I bought, says, I bought a spare course hanger. Cool. Very cool. 
All right. So if anyone has a question, oh, here's one right here. Linda Hurley, how does it feel to you? It must have, it must have been calling you. Definitely. Um, there's a little metaphysical store here in Sarasota called Elysian Fields. And uh, it, when I saw it, I knew I had to have it. It was calling me. It's just like certain rings, opal rings, they call me too. But this one, because it's just so shiny and sparkly, I had to have it. It's all the sparkles. <laughs> um, yeah, so anything shiny and sparkly um, will get my attention every time. Yeah, it does look like a heart. That's what Julie Rogers was saying. It kind of does. It looks like you can see the heart in there. Yeah. Right here and up and around. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So, okay, um, please talk about time, Susan Worcester, please talk about timelines and when you found two bottles of Windex in your house. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, yeah, that was, um, Michelle brought that up on one of our shows together, I believe. And, uh, yeah, we only have one bottle of Windex, so I thought. And uh, I was cleaning the bathroom my, uh, the, yeah, there's a bathroom. We have a guest bathroom and a master ba ba uh, master bedroom bathroom. But I was cleaning the guest bathroom, and uh, I couldn't. I knew the Windex was there. And I, I I cleaned it off, and I, I think I, went back to the kitchen. For some reason, because I, got distracted or whatever, I got back into the, bathroom, and the Windex is gone. And so. I'm looking around for it. I'm like, I knew it was here. I was just using it. And I go into the kitchen and I find it underneath the sink. So I'm like, how did this get here? And I go back to the bathroom to use it. And the other one appears <laughs> again, out of nowhere. It's just sitting there right in front of me. And there's no way I would have missed it the first time. So it, two different timelines right there. Um, were merging right in front of me. And what you'll find is that you'll, you, you'll do that. You'll have a set of keys that you put in a certain spot every time. But one day you're going to come home and you're going to look for those keys or you're going to just look for them, period, and they're going to be moved. They're going to be in a different spot that you've never put them before. And you know for sure that you put them always in the same spot every time. Little things like this. We're seeing these merging of timelines going on. And that's what's creating the Mandela effect. You know, we're seeing all these different things about the Mandela effect that are really fascinating. Um, the latest one that, that I was checking out was um, the California Dreaming, where I stopped into a church, I passed along the way, while well, I dropped down on my knees and I began to pray. So we thought it was. But now it's, I pretend to pray. <laughs> and. I don't ever remember that being, I pretend to pray, but you can even watch the video of the mamas and papas singing that song in the 1960s or whatever, and they're saying pretend. The timeline changed. Another one is that in the Bible, and a lot of you know that I study the Bible to prove it wrong, but and find out the funny, there are some truths in there that are really cool, but in the Bible, we all know that this animal lays down next to the lamb. And we all thought it was the lion until recently. And now it's the wolf. <laughs> the wolf? Where did that come from? The wolf lays down next to the lamb. Have any of you ever heard that? I mean, like 10 years ago? The wolf lays down next to the lamb. It's crazy. You know, and of course, one of the popular ones is that HBO show with Sarah Jessica Parker and all these other ladies. Sex in the City. Not Sex and the City. It was Sex in the City. But now it's Sex and the City. Mandela Effect. Timelines are changing, they're converging into what I believe is what is humanity's greatest and highest good. The best 
possible timeline for humanity. That's where we're heading. Okay, so I'm going to scroll back and see if I missed anything. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Okay. I thought I froze up there for a minute. There's a comment here that's pretty cool uh, by Clinton Michele Joseph. He said that he also had three a, a dream of three tidal waves. And he lives in Hawaii. Wow. That's that's awesome when you get these confirmations. You know, when I put that dream out there, we had so many people that my dream of three tidal waves that we had so many people that were confirming. Yes, I had the same a, a tidal wave wave dream and like you I didn't feel scared or it was a very positive dream because we're seeing these not necessarily as tidal waves of water but waves of energy, huge waves of energy that are going on. And that's what's happening right now. So um, it's it's really cool and that's just another confirmation. You know, we've had at least 10, 12 people that have had that same dream of three tidal waves, which is really cool. The Trinity. Nikki is asking, Nikki Colombo, one of our writers for N5D, our guest writers, um, after meditation, do you feel buzzing and rumbling in your feet? I don't, do you? No, I don't. I even have a, a pyramid, a copper pyramid, um, that has the same exact angles as the Giza uh, Plateau Pyramid, the main pyramid in the Giza Plateau. And oftentimes my dog Sammy will lay underneath it. Uh, so it's really cool. You, you, can, you know that it's channeling down the energy and it's a great place to meditate. But I've never felt that. There have been times though where I've had something that it might just be in the middle of the day or I'm just walking or what, whatever, but there's times where I just get like this electrical charge. It's not a buzzing in the feet, but it's an electrical charge where it's almost like you hear this <laughs> kind of sound, and, but it's in your head. And I can't explain it, but you know, it doesn't hurt. It's not anything that frightens me. I just don't know what it is, honestly. Okay, scrolling. I love the fact that you guys are able to chat with each other and I hope that you're making connections and, and uh, friending one another too. I'm just so blessed that we have so many people here from all around the world. I'm so humbled and grateful. Okay, Gwendolyn Van Killigam is asking, how do you feel about soul connections? People who are separated for years but the one has foresight dreams about the other. Hmm. I wonder what kind of foresight dreams you're having. That you would be back together again? I'm sure in your situation, Gwendolyn, that um, something is going on where you probably, at least on a soul level, are hugging each other. There's that one statue at, I think it's at, at Burning Rock. Is that where it is? Where the two there's two people that are sitting back to back, and their their legs are like this, but they're in, inside inside the statue. It's a wire statue, but inside the statue, there's two children just reaching out to each other, saying, "I want to play," basically. So I wonder if that's similar to what you're experiencing, where the adults are just like, you know, for whatever reasons, um, not getting along or communicating, but the inner child is still wanting to reach out or the higher self wanting to reach out and it's basically saying, hey, let's play. So Christy Lang is saying she gets a buzzing in her feet and wonders what it means. So Nikki, if you can answer Christy's question, that would be awesome because I, I have no answer for that one. Sorry. Though, you know, the first thing that does come to mind, though, is grounding. You know, when, when you are meditating, um, if, you're, if you're moving the energy, you know, to the, from the crown chakra down and back through, 
it sounds like you're making that connection uh, through the feet and there's something there is some kind of connection going on so I, I bet it has something to do with that but outside of that I, I, I couldn't tell you here comes the Sun foot chakra <laughs> yes the foot chakra okay so um, I don't see any more questions Oh, here's one by Connie. How did you get rid of cancer? Yes, in, um, in 2007 I was diagnosed with a stage 3 melanoma and I have this huge scar on my back. I'll show you because I'm not embarrassed about it. And uh, it was a blessing actually. Um, at the time, I was going through a uh, bad marriage with wife number two, and it was manifesting as cancer. It was a cancerous marriage, and it manifested in the right-hand side of my body. If you know anything about QHHT, anything that happens on your right side is current life. Anything on the left side is past life. So this was a current life manifestation that was coming through in my back of a cancerous relationship that I was in. And of course, it wasn't all her fault. It was partially my fault. Half my fault. Might have been, might have, might have been more than half. I don't know. I t but I take responsibility in that failed marriage as well. And I have since sent her, you know, obviously, immediately I sent her you know, forgiveness and forgave myself for the relationship that failed between us. But that's what happens. Um, it manifested as cancer. And the blessing part was one of where we lived we had a uh, community pool and in our subdivision and the woman there's a woman that was laying down next to me um, in the lounge chair next to me and she noticed this um, mole that was on my back that was raised and abnormally shaped and discolored the ABC's of what you need to look for in a mole and uh, she said you, you really need to get that checked out because she had a bunch of cancer cancerous moles removed on herself and I did and sure as hell it it was it wasn't good because it had already gotten into my bloodstream a little and it affected my uh, the glands in my under my arm and in my groin um, so they had to remove glands from both areas along with the cancer in my back um, through surgery and I, you know I told them there's no effing way you were doing chemo or radiation just cut it out and that's it and that's all I got done and I haven't had a relapse since but it's really interesting to learn about and to see how certain people are guided and our place there now that woman that one of my, my one of my pool people that was just happened to be next to me at the pool if it wasn't for her I wouldn't be here right now in 5d wouldn't exist so um, she basically saved my life as did many other people throughout my life so that I'm be able to be here with you and we're all able to be together making connections with one another so I'm very grateful for that woman for saving my life Okay, see if I missed anything here. I love this, how you guys are just like all chatting amongst each other. Once again, seriously, if you're not friends already on Facebook, friend one another, because we are all family. It's beautiful. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to do another goddess card um, today, and I'm going to pull a collective card for everyone that's tuning in right now, and that's the energy I'm going to put into this, that this card is going to be the ultimate message that we all need to get right now, and, and that includes anyone watching this on the recorded version. That's interesting, I just saw this card. I always look at the cards that happen to fall out just for the heck of it. So there we have my, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, Maive, Maive, Cycles and Rhythms. Honor the cycles of your body, energy levels and emotions. But that wasn't the one I drew, it just happened to be one that popped out while I was shuffling. So wouldn't it be funny if I end up cutting the deck and that's the one that we end up getting. So anyway. Okay, 
So whatever this one is. Isolt. Okay. Undying love. The love you have shared is eternal regardless of the situation. We're going to look this one up too. What a great card. Okay. Here we go. I think, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Isolt? I S O L T? Isolt? Isolt? Anyway. Here, I can hold this up while I'm reading it. The message from Isolt. When it comes to matters of the heart, your help is here. It's all around you and also inside you. Your inner wisdom may seem quieted by any pain that you feel. Yet be assured that, that the healing you're undergoing is swift and efficient. And you truly are healing from the outside, from the inside out. First, your heart must heal from its grief, loneliness, and any feelings of betrayal. This can take some time, so be patient with yourself. Treat yourself as you would any ailing person with caution, gentleness, and renderness. Next, get yourself out into the world, not in a harsh fashion, but with outings to parks, forests, and such, the beach, which are essential to lightening your outlook. Nature is the great healer, you see. That's why I'm frequently amidst the flowers and the trees. Although they may seem quiet on the outside, they're quite talkative when you breathe and simply ingest their magical tones in conversation. Spend time amongst the forest and the trees as well as plants and the animals, and you'll regain that foothold upon this planet. You'll revive your sense of spirit and your desire to tread among, among the living once again. I promise that your heart will mend and that you'll also help others in this fashion along the way. And some other various meanings of this card include love from your romantic partner is eternal regardless of outward appearances. You're healing from a breakup you're healing from some other type of loss. Let go of an old relationship to make room for a new one. The love that you send into the world is an important part of your divine purpose. Your deceased love, loved one is happy and sends you love. So there's all sorts of messages that come out of that. A lot of messages about grounding too, um, to get out there and ground. Maybe not necessarily at the beach, in the forest, talk to the animals and the trees cool message very cool okay so I'm scrolling back seeing seeing if there are any more questions yeah I kind of like doing the uh, on the Facebook live I think I'll have like a, a rock I'll pick out a different rock to talk about and we'll continue doing the uh, Oracle, the Goddess Guidance Oracle cards, too, to see what kind of message we, we all get. So Amber uh, Simpson saying that she got a loud ringing in her right ear when I started reading the card. That's awesome. Okay, so... I guess that'll pretty much end it for us um, for today. The next time I'll be on, who knows? Um, I kind of do these impromptu, but I know Michelle's coming back on Monday. I'm picking her up at the airport, and I think we're going to do one together um, coming up sometime. I know her schedule's kind of busy right now, too, but in the near future, her and I will be doing one together, and uh, we'll see how that goes. So I just want to, once again, thank everyone that showed up here. I'm just so flattered, humbled, grateful that so many people tuned in from all around the world and that we're all making these connections. Um, and hopefully, as I mentioned several times, you're all friending one another and you're making new soul family with each other as we are all one. Until the next time, namaste everyone.